state of Florida versus Jonathan J. Perez, verdict count one. We, the jury, found the defendant guilty of first degree murder as charged in the indictment. All right, folks, it is time now for today's Talk Back segment. Each day we post a question on Court TV's social media pages. We gather your comments and questions, then respond right here on the show. Jonathan Quiles was found guilty after less than one hour of deliberations. So we asked you, did the jury get it right? Let's bring in Deputy Public Defender for Los Angeles County, Philip Dubay, and Criminal Defense Attorney David Bruno. And guys, our first comment comes from Brian. Brian says, the testimony from his brother was what I thought really helped the jury in their decision. And David Bruno, that's kind of where I go. And what was interesting, I thought it was so strong that I questioned them bringing in the inmates, which I thought had some issues. But when I heard the closing argument and the way they handled it, I understood because they wanted to show that there was this consistency amongst the statements. And I think that proved to be very powerful. I agree with you, Michael. As usual, I mean, the brother, this is the blood brother of the defendant. Obviously, he would protect him if he could. But then again, when he steps up and he gives that, that testimony and it corroborates the allegations, especially, I've, I've, I'm like uh, saying it again and again, the pregnancy, the minor, the niece, and then the brother statement wraps it all up. And yeah, they probably could have done without the inmate. However, he wrapped it up in the closing saying, well, nobody else, they didn't communicate. They didn't collude. They all said the same thing coming from different places. And to me, that really kind of confirms and corroborates each other. Yeah, no doubt. Because there might have been some question as to the veracity because he had lied in the past. But all three of them, I think, turned out to be very, pretty powerful. Our next comment comes from Cynthia. Then Cynthia says, oh, my God, way too fast. Ah, that kind of mirrors what you said earlier, Phillips. I want to ask you, you know, when, when you look at all the work that was done, and I think we both agree, all of us agree, that the defense did what they could, and I think they did a good job. They obviously put the time in, um, did their research, worked hard on the case. And then you get a 53-minute verdict. What's the fastest verdict you've ever had? And, and how do you feel when something like that happens after all the work you put in? I had uh, an elder residential rape. Uh, not guilty by reason of insanity trial, and the jury came back in 10 minutes with a guilty. Oh gosh. And I got to tell you, I had 40 boxes of oh. discovery and materials and put my blood, sweat, and tears in that case. I came back to my office. I didn't even have an opportunity to put my keys down, and the phone is ringing. It's the clerk. You have a verdict. Mm, gosh. You know, so yes. But you know what happens? We go through what's called trial denial. You know, in the face of an avalanche of evidence, we latch on to these kernels of hope, these kernels of doubt, like Miss Clip, for example. Yes. But when you, you know, juxtapose that with the brother's testimony, it's just so fatal. Yeah. You know, that whatever doubt she could have given the jury mm -hmm. was just overshadowed by the brother. Yeah. So I just feel bad that it was done in less than an hour. Yeah. And Miss Clip was, of course, the testimony that she had seen Ayana after the date they yeah. said she died. And I had said to you earlier, I thought the fact that her social media went dark after the 18th kind of made it hard for you to believe that she actually saw her as a 16-year-old girl who's not doing anything on social media. Tough to believe. Our next comment comes from Andrea. Andrea says, why do the defense always ask for the jury to be polled? What do they think? It's going to happen that a juror is going to jump up and say, nah, I was only joking. I think they're innocent. Um, let me go to David Bruno. David, can you explain? Yeah, sure. These verdicts require unanimous verdicts. We got 12 people, right? So if you're a defense attorney, you have nothing to lose because they've already come back with the guilty. So if you have a juror that maybe was on the fence or was pressured, that would be the last opportunity to speak up. And there's really nothing to lose by a defense attorney asking for the polling of a guilty verdict. Yeah. That's why they do it. Absolutely. And we saw something similar to that in the Nicholas Cruz case where there was just some pressure being applied. I know you wanted to respond. What do you, what do you say about oh, that? Oh, I had it happen. Yeah. Yeah. I said, let's poll. And sure enough, juror number 11 said, well, you know, I don't know. We could have stayed a few more minutes. And, you know, I wasn't quite sure. So you know what? The judge rejected the verdict and sent them back. And you know what? It came back deadlocked. 11 to 1 for guilt. So that one holdout, but for me saying, yes, I want that jury polled, a hung jury could have gone down really as a guilty. Yeah. Well, there it is. There's the answer to your question. <laughs> yes. That's a great answer to the question because you never know when that could happen. Our last comment comes from Ann. Ann says, knew he would be found guilty. 
He's ruined his life as well as that innocent girl and his unborn baby. That's right. Don't forget, it was his baby. Shame on him. And I actually think that's a perfect place to end it. But, David, I will ask you, uh, do you think they will vote for the death penalty in this case? Oh, I don't know. You know, we had Cruz, Nicholas Cruz, just recently in the same jurisdiction. Uh, that was a heinous massacre. What the sentencing phase does, it opens up mitigating factors. So they have every opportunity to open up the scope of the relevant evidence, but he said he didn't do it. I wonder if he's going to change his tune. Now he's in the sentencing phase. We shall see. All right, Philip DeBay. If the jury would have been out longer during the mm -hmm. guilt phase, maybe a few days, and you've got a couple that are holdouts, maybe, but I, I could envision death. All right. Well, thanks to David Bruno and Philip Dubay for being with us. Always a pleasure to have you gentlemen on the show.